Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to talk about Ubuntu versus Linux Mint. Well, as we know that Ubuntu is based on Debian and Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu. It means the underlying system of both of these Linux distribution is almost same. Now let's see what do these two Linux distribution has to offer and let's see what do they have different between them. So first of all, if we talk about the user interface, as you can see, we have some of the applications that are docked on the left side of our screen and we have a repository or you can say a directory of home onto our desktop. And then we have some of the utilities on the top right corner of our screen. In the middle, we have our time and date. And if you click on it, it will open your calendar. And not only that, you will see all the notifications of your system in here as well. After that, we have a button that says show applications. If you just click on it, it will open all the applications that are there into your system. So I will just get out of this. And now if I talk about the desktop environment, what Ubuntu comes with Genome desktop environment by default. Let me open my settings. Here it is. And now I'll go to its about section. Here you can see it says Genome version 40.40. It means that Ubuntu uses Genome desktop environment. We also have some of the other flavors of Ubuntu. For example, we have Kubuntu that comes with KDE desktop environment. Then we have Lubuntu. It comes with LXDE desktop environment. We have XUbuntu, which comes with XFCE desktop environment. And we also have Ubuntu Mate. Now let's see what we can do in terms of system customization and what does Ubuntu has to offer us. Again, I will open my settings. So first of all, we have networks, we have Bluetooth background. That's a really good thing that we have options available in terms of having different backgrounds. Then we can do a little bit of customization in terms of appearance, like we have different themes and we can change our top size and we can personalize it. Then we have notification, search, application and many more things. So in terms of customization, Ubuntu offers a very good range of personalization options. I will just get out of this and now I'll move to the software center of Ubuntu and let's see what do we have in here. So this is how the software center of Ubuntu looks like. From here, we have different categories that we can explore. For example, if you want to download some game, just go to this section and you can download it. After that, you have development, entertainment, science, social, and many more categories. Not only that, you can explore for a specific one as well. So if I just write here VLC hit enter, it has presented me with the result here. So this is how you can use software center in your Ubuntu. Other than that, we have a very sleek and a very state of the art look in our Ubuntu software center. It gives a look of a new operating system that has all the state of the art features and user interface. I will just get out of this and now I'll open a utility into my terminal that is called as top. So here I will just write top and here we have all the information about the system. For example, at the moment my system is using around 1120 megabytes of my RAM. That's a bit hard on my hardware resources because we know there are a lot of other Linux distribution that do not use this much of hardware resources. And here we have these processes that are running and we have all the information about how much resources each process is using. So as we have seen that it is a bit heavier onto my hardware resources. Now I'll talk about the hardware requirements that are needed to install Ubuntu onto your machine. Well, I'm using Ubuntu 21 at the moment and in order to have Ubuntu on your machine, you must have 4 GB of RAM and 25 GB of hard disk space in order to have smooth experience. Now at the end, I will talk about the performance of Ubuntu on older machine. Well, if you have a little bit of older machine or you are using Ubuntu from a very long time on a single machine, with the passage of time, the performance will get low because Ubuntu requires a little bit more hardware resources as we have seen from this utility. On the other hand, I'll talk about the Linux Mint and you will be surprised to know that Linux Mint is a very good one for older hardware. And with that, we are done with Ubuntu and now let's move on towards the Linux Mint. This is how Linux Mint looks like. I'll start with the user interface. 
Here we have computer and home directory onto my desktop and then we have some of the applications that are docked onto our taskbar. We have our Firefox, then we have our terminal, then we have our files and here we have our desktop. On the right side of our taskbar, here we have some of the utilities like we have date and time, volume, network and some other things. After that, here we have application launcher button or you can say menu. And here we have all the applications that come as a default into our Linux Mint. We have more number of applications in Linux Mint as compared to Ubuntu. Here you also have all the categories of the applications as well. Here you can see in terms of graphics, we have three applications. In terms of internet, we have five. And same goes for other categories of application. I will just get out of this. And now if I talk about the desktop environment, we have Cinnamon, we have Mate, we also have KDE and XFCE desktop environment for our Linux Mint. LXDE and Flexbox are no longer being developed and supported for a Linux Mint. Now let's see how much customization Linux Mint offers. For that purpose, I'll go to my settings of my Linux Mint. I'll go to my menu and I will just search for settings in here. Here we have different kinds of settings. I'll go to my system settings. So from here, you have a lot of things that you can do in terms of your appearance. Then you have your preferences that you can have into your Linux Mint. For example, you can set your account details. You have your applets, date and time, desktops. Then you have your general options and many more things. So Linux Mint has a lot of things that we can customize as per our liking. I will just get out of this and now I'll go to the software center of my Linux Mint. Here it is. I will just click on it. So here we have all the necessary applications that we can download and use. For example, if you are into gaming, we have support available from Steam. We have games like Minecraft and you can also search for a particular one as well. Other than that, we also have the categorized division of applications just like Ubuntu, like we have fonts, we have games, programming, office and many more other categories. And from the looks of it, it gives the feel of a very sleek, fast and very responsive software center. I will just get out of this and now I'll open my terminal and in my terminal, I'll open a utility to see how much resources my Linux Mint is using. Well, as you can see, it is using almost 820 megabytes of my RAM and it is not as much heavier onto my hardware resources as my Ubuntu was. So it means Linux Mint is a bit lighter onto my hardware resources. And here we have all the other information about the processes and how much resources each process is using at the moment. So as we have seen that it is using almost 820 megabytes of my RAM. So the question comes, how much resources do we require in terms of hardware resources? Well, in order to install Linux Mint, you should have four gigabytes of RAM and 20 gigabytes of free hard disk space to have a smooth experience of using Linux Mint. At the end, I'll talk about the performance of Linux Mint on older machine. Well, unlike Ubuntu, if you use Linux Mint onto older machine, you will have a very responsive and a very fast and smooth experience because Linux Mint is a very fast and sleek Linux distribution and it does not require to have a lot of hardware resources. So you will have a very good experience using Linux Mint even onto your older machine. At the end, if I were to conclude, I would say that Ubuntu is a jack of all trade kind of Linux distribution. But again, at the same time, it is a bit heavier onto your hardware resources. On the other hand, Linux Mint is a great Linux distribution. And just like Ubuntu, it also have the same underlying structure. So more or less, both of these Linux distributions are same. But if you want fast, smooth and responsive experience, I would recommend you to go with Linux Mint. If you are a beginner and you do not have a lot of experience with Linux distribution, both of these Linux distribution are good to start with. Linux Mint gives you a vibe of Windows 7. For example, the docking of applications and opening the menu is almost like Windows 7. So in that term, Linux Mint is better. Other than that, we have more or less same things in both of these Linux distribution. So it all depends on you and your liking how and with which one you want to go. And that brings us to the end of today's video. We'll see you in the next one.